Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm your host, Jim Dempsey. Well, we just finished Thanksgiving and I hope that you have enjoyed your Thanksgiving. I hope you got a good time with friends, relatives, just enjoyed an opportunity to be able to be thankful. Our world right now is a challenging, turbulent time, but having an opportunity to be able to thank people is so important. And we have so much as a country, as a people to be thankful for, and I am so glad that we have a day that we can celebrate and be thankful together. Well, we are moving faster than I can imagine towards year end. I hope that as we turn the corner on Thanksgiving, that you see this as an all out sprint to the finish line on December 31st. And so if you haven't already gotten your year end letters out, I would strongly recommend you get them out by Monday or Tuesday this next week. It's going to be really, really important that you move on that quickly because then you'll want to start to make phone calls and even visit in the month of December. But I can tell you this, there are a lot of organizations that have already gotten their year-end letters out and are already seeing responses. And so getting out ahead of this is so important. And so I don't want to put you under the pile, but just know that so many other organizations already out there. Now, if, it, if this is all you can do, this is the best you can do with the number of staff and the amount of resources you have, I am just so delighted that you are at least doing a year-end letter and getting something out there. Make sure once again, remember the statistics, a year-end letter done right is going to yield about an 8 to 9% response rate. Adding a phone call to that, calling those people to see what they've decided, jumps that response rate up to 28%. And then adding a personal appointment to the critical few will jump you even more to your response rate of 50%. So I just hope that you are able to move on that very soon. Let's dive right into our question of the week. Our question of the week is from Rachel in Boston, Massachusetts. And Rachel writes, my boss would like to buy some mailing lists for direct mail. I want to know if you have bought targeted lists segmented by interest and not zip code and have a recommendation where to buy those. Well, Rachel, this is a very targeted question. And for many of our viewers, we really focus in on different topics that are typically more broad. This one is focused to direct mail, which not every organization does. And this is targeted towards rental of lists. Now, I have done a lot of list rental in my 38 years in development. We refer to this as new donor acquisition. We want to look for ways to find new donors. And rental lists are a good way to find new donors. Now, it's important to realize that rental lists will generate less than a 1% response. That means that for every dollar you spend, you're only going to get 50 cents back. However, if your letters are good, your, strong, your concept is strong, and you are putting out very good stories and letters that people enjoy reading, what you will see is that you will see second, third, fourth, fifth gifts from people. And as you see that, your costs to get their name will start to go down. Renting lists cost money. Generally, you go to your printer that you have your letters printed on 
and they will find for you lists to rent. And yes, you can rent by more than just zip code. You can rent by category. If you're an organization that's a homeless shelter, you can get lists of people who have given to homeless shelters. If you are a rescue mission, you can give to people who have given, you can get lists of people who have given to rescue missions. If you are battling human trafficking, you can get individuals who have a heart and give to eliminate human trafficking. So it's important, you need to ask for that. But just know the more you get targeted, your number of names decrease, but your costs also start to increase because it gets more and more targeted. The more targeted, on one hand, it's gonna save you money, but it will cost for you to get a little bit more targeted. What I would recommend in any list rental program is to test, test, test and make sure that you start with the minimum list. If, uh, if some list brokers, their minimum is 5,000, test 5,000, don't test 50,000. See if those segments are going to be beneficial for you. Look for lists that are very similar to the, in the organization that you represent and see if those people are interested in giving. And you may have to test multiple lists, multiple groups of people before you hit on one that does well. We have had great success with our organization in list rental. Now, ironically, we have got a very strict code that our board of directors has had us stand by, which is we will never give away or rent our list to other organizations. However, there's other organizations that, they, that do it and they will do it because they get good money for using their names or for giving their names to list brokers. So you need to find that balance and weigh that. But rental lists can be effective once again if you've got a good letter and try a letter over and over don't try multiple letters hoping for something to work try one letter and and vary that until you strike on something that people really like if you want to find out how to write a good letter i've got a video up above on how to write a good letter but you're gonna to want to look for compelling sentences that start things off and you're going to want to look for a PS that's going to draw people in and summarize everything. So I hope that this has been helpful for you and I wish you the best as you are moving into this area of new donor acquisition and list rental. It's not for the faint of heart because in the beginning you're destined to lose money, but it's the lifetime value of a donor that you really want. So Rachel, I hope that helps you and I wish you the best as you strive to move forward. Once again, if you liked what you heard, please subscribe to this channel. We would love to have you as a life changer and we're so committed to help you make a difference in your world. If you want to submit questions, you can do so out on Twitter at DebFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you want to follow us on Instagram, you can do so at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. Also, you can follow us on our Facebook group. We are growing in our Facebook community. You can go out to Life Changers and be a Life Changer member of our group. So I hope as you move towards year end that you know we are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.